And I'm like, he just smoked something that made him get on whatever. And that's usually when they, when they do shit like that. It's usually for tax purposes, because um, I think. Oh. I think most Def did that because he was calling out this one guy who kind of pretty much low-key ran the music game. And he kept calling him out through songs. And he did an interview where he said, like, suddenly his music was getting taken off the platforms. And then suddenly he couldn't work in America. And he changed his name. I guess he can't work as no, most Def no more. You well, no, he actually said, oh, well, that may be true. But he was yeah, talking you can't about be, you can't be talking, He was like, you can't be he talking about it because Jews. he said most Def is non I mean, yeah, you say shit like that, but you can't be talking shit about Jews and you work for them. So they'll destroy you. That's why Snoop Dogg became Snoop Doggy Dogg. He left Death Row, became Snoop Dogg. What? Well, and right, that, and right. then he, well, yeah, that was legal, man. That's why I'm saying legal shit. Yeah, if, if somebody telling you you can't work as most Def because I own your name. Because instead right. of getting your shit together, you came and got signed to a label. And yeah, they pay for everything for you. Yeah. You know, and then I wear of how, what's the word, petty it can get. I mean, yeah, petty, yeah. and then at the same time, how how stupid it can get that you can let somebody pay for your whole thing and then assume they can't take it from you. If I bought your house and your shoes and your car and you sucking shit to me, I could evict you tomorrow. It's not my fault that you chose not to buy your own house. So that's what it comes down to. It's not being petty. It's about... Not biting the head that fed you. If you didn't buy a house and I bought you a house and I bought you a car and I buy you shoes and you think you in a position to talk shit and you be surprised when you're homeless and your kids sleeping in the car that I'm about to take tomorrow, you can't get Actually, mad at that. You're kind of describing a lot of teenagers That's, when they start talking this to their parents. I want to be treated as an adult and I want this, I want that. I'm like, okay, well, go get a job, you know? <laughs> And then that becomes the issue. That becomes that's how they. That's the same mentality they use on a lot of entertainers, not just rappers. That teenage mentality. They give you all this shit. Just like they used to say, Barry Gordy used to soup up the, the the studio time once you get gold platinum. And it's like, yeah, it's his studio. We, 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 you can't get mad at him because buy your own studio. That's when you start having artists buying their own studio. I'm gonna send you what I did, nigga. You ain't about to charge me for recording songs for you. I'm well, making, you know, that's what every artist, like you said, not just rappers, but uh, comedians. I guess they're a little more into it. <laughs> But uh, comedians, singers, uh, when they go on tour, they're like, you know, these uh, hotels and all this other mess is not free. Yeah, and it's like pay for your own. A lot of people pay for their own flight. You know, Missy said she'll never buy a plane, but she owns tons of cars, but she still fly coach. You, you you depend on that studio to buy your shit for you, it'd be a $50 plane ticket or suddenly $500 because the studio paid for it. They didn't put you on spirit. Shit like that. Or they getting paid on your name. And you getting paid $500 a night. You come to find out your, your label getting paid $3,000 a night for you to rap. You the one down there. Nobody there except you, but they making the most money. So you got to come on your own shit. Manage yourself. Pay for your own publishing. But if you got them paying for your publishing, paying for your studio time, getting you a house, getting you a car, and you wondering why you broke TLC. I'm talking about, you know, shit like that. Yeah. But at the same time, if you don't know this was going on, you fall for that. It's just like the ignorance they go down for that. Well, yeah, they got this thing about I really want to see or really want to. You just excited to be in the biz, and then you get hit with the business side of said business. It's yeah. like, oh, and it turns into that real quickly, and you see, then you start seeing people doing stories ten years later. Master P took all my money. No, Master P paid for you to rap, and instead of going on, you thought shit was sweet and signing your ass this whole time, not realizing this man bought your publishing. It's interesting you name him because he's the only one that people don't bad mouth because he was talking no, about he, he actually would look out for his artists. No, so. no, people are bad mouthing him now. I didn't hear that. I yeah, people, it's everybody. It's, it's a lot of rappers that like wait ten years and be like, Puffy took my money. No, nigga, Puffy paid for your studio time, and instead of you, you know, what I'm saying escaping or doing your thing, you had he fucked you over, so you don't make none of that money. He owns all that shit. You should have been like Biggie Mama. Documentary. Who? Which who's documentary? The No Limit. I saw a part of. That's when they start talking shit. That documentary. Well, yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. They talk about he, you know, gave his said his piece, and then they said this because he, me and X was on there, and a couple of them was like, because for a while they was like, what do you do? I, I'm sure you remember how the old records was at becoming out one after another. Artists writing for one person's album. Yeah, um, Mace. They said Mace was doing that when Biggie died. Mace was the hair writer at the point. He was writing the songs and the hits and coming up with the hits. But so I'm saying every every artist would be in the studio, all once in there, all with their pads or whatever, writing for one artist, and so all these songs just be turned out so each 
<laughs> Each album has like 20 songs on it And they just be churned out One after another after that, I'm like what? That was smart Yeah on his part But at the same time They wasn't paying They wasn't charging him For the writing So they done wrote All these songs for him That he living off oh, his yeah, money Oh yeah 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 So he done But I mean when they came to Hunger Game Ron The same thing would happen With them So it's kind of like He just talking about Getting the uh, credit As a writer Right, yeah, that's part of the thing. I, I was telling somebody that, like, I was telling my father, like, just record shit because whatever you record, I'm about to buy my publishing. You could buy it, and I, that's like I was telling somebody, so you could do that shit. So look at DJ Khaled, look at Quincy Jones. You could just pay for the studio time. If I paid you to write a song, I don't got to owe you money for that. So I pay for this publishing. So that's my song. So don't All be right. mad twenty years from now when you I wrote that song. I'm in I'm in the show, sir. That's your fault. You should have published it with me, nigga. Uh, Taylor Swift, and they said that um. What's his name? Because my cousin do this too, and I'm about, that's why I'm about to buy my publishing um, company. It's a lot of artists. Prince was one of them. He wanted to do a song with Nas. He wouldn't because Nas still worked for the Jews. Prince said he don't want. He didn't want to work with people who didn't have own their own publishing. He, he wanted to make. He wanted you to make your money. He didn't want us to make money for them. He said we make money for them. We'll be dead and gone. They'll still be making money off of us. Prince got a vault of shit that he don't ever release. And they still trying to get their hold their hands yeah, on. Talk about it. You know, no, one of the albums is about to come out. So. Yeah, that's probably from the shit they recorded. But he's got other shit. But they no, buy. No, no, no. They talk about that. He did the same thing as in Tupac did. He recorded all this music so one day down the generation of you know, little tweaks and this and that. Which I gotta say, when they did that with that Michael Jackson album, uh, what twenty fourteen, Timbaland did all the like. Three Britney. Is that Britney? What? Is that Britney? Yeah, more. That song old as hell. I know, but I'm, you got to be a Britney friend to know it. I, I realized that's, that's the album too. That's the album Timberland did for, right? Uh, mostly because he didn't do that track without Sprite here, uh, or maybe somebody else did it and they gave it to him, which happens a lot. But uh, that's the song. Um, what she said, the F miss is Britney, bitch. I remember yeah, that song. Yeah, yeah, when it started out, yeah, and everybody started beating that. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah. I fucked with Brittany. Free Brittany. Huh? I fucked with Brittany. Free Brittany. You know, any woman that can make her own money and try to take care of her kids, let her live her life. I don't give a fuck how crazy she is. We're not going to pretend she didn't go basic instinct on everybody and they actually said she had bipolar disorder. They put her on medication, which they say is inevitable. They, they have to keep changing it because the body adapts to it or the brain does. And he, like she agreed to, they was just talking about the conservatorship needs to be a lot of parameters need to be changed. Because they talking about her dad and the other people making money off of her, and she wasn't getting none of the money. It's like they're taking advantage of the medical issue. Yeah, that's exactly like, what's happening. It's just happening. That she happened to be rich. Cause that was that's what happened now. There's so many guys who would get with, come to their mama's house, or the moment next door kids don't show up, so they start taking care of her. Puts the paperwork on the bitch. Next thing you know, they got the shit woman over there sitting on her ass, and they making money off her. That's a, that's a whole hustle, right? <laughs> I know a ton of people that do. That's what happened to my son. And I had to fight right. for him because the bitch stole my son and fucking talking talk yeah, about I that shit. The whole, the whole, that's the, the system. You were down there on the base, and like, I'm mommy now. Like, yeah, no, that happens. Not- I, it especially happened with old people because there be a lot of people who don't check on their parents. Oh yeah. You you know left your mom at the house for a month, ain't seen her, and the nigga next door been taking care of her. Now he, now he got paperwork. Now when she died, he he getting insurance money off of you. Ain't getting shit because you just been doing your best life. And said, I know a lot of cats I know who said fuck they mama when they got old, but she done sacrificed for you. She done went broke to take care of you and your brothers and sisters. But when she get old, you like fuck her. Right. I'd be like, I don't understand. Like I, I said, I'm never putting my. I don't care how much I say to my mom, I'm never putting her in a nursing home. None of that shit. I'm not about to. And the guys who do that shit, I usually see them. I can understand if you can't afford to whatever. I usually see them out here balling on videos and shit like you living your best life and your mom in a nursing home, nigga. What is wrong with you? So I don't know. Yeah. But that's the system of shit. You know what I'm saying? Just like the fucked up system. I my grandmother. But the thing was, we moved into the house over there in Highland Park. We started, the dementia started as they But we couldn't work, you know, qualify to take care of her because she had some things done before it happened. Like we didn't know she had one of her toes removed. And it was getting infected. Like, she needed to go to where she could receive better care. Because for a while, you know, they had the paramedics, EMG, coming out there on a uh, semi-daily basis. And yeah, I, could, like, yeah. I could understand it, but you was keeping in touch with it's people that disappeared from it. But at the same time, it's ADR. So at the same time, it's ADR. So I am not. I refuse to believe that somebody couldn't learn how to take care of her foot. So I'm not going to sit in that class. Oh, no, 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 no. Just it. Just yeah, we, like, we ain't going to play that game. You literally, she needed to be, you can't be there 
with what was going on with her feet, like when the shoe came off and you started smelling it, like it was, she needed to be in a medical facility. Yeah. So I, like you can't always take care of it. Like uh uh-uh, uh, that didn't work because that's what happened. No no, well, I, I, I understand that part. I'm saying what well, led up to that part. That didn't happen overnight. So if she was getting oh, neglected for like no a, no no, it yeah. happened before yeah. she moved in. That's what I'm saying. She, she didn't tell anybody. Now a lot of times my mom was going to doctor appointments with her. She wasn't completely forthcoming all the time. Like about what was going on with her. Like that's what happened with the house over there on the on the on the other side of the street. You know what I'm saying? Like she took out a reverse mortgage on it. And I was wondering about when I when I went went over there and saw her and Jamila. It was a brand new floor that was laid down in the kitchen. It was all black. It looked nice. And I'm like, yeah, where you working at? I know you had the money for that, your car and you know, whatever else. She got a reverse mortgage on the house. Nobody knew about it till we moved in there. And it's like, yeah, you gotta uh, pay X amount to this time. And you know, with a reverse mortgage. Well, she went out because we moved her in with us. That automatically goes to the bank. That house was paid off by our grandfather decades <laughs> And it's once we're moving, Fannie Mae now owns that house. Like, yeah, that, that happened to my grandma. Yeah. You find out you can get all this money once, but it's like, yeah, you got to stay in the house for two years. That's what I used the year with other reverse mortgages. But, I mean, it is what it is. Like, yeah, people but, doing what they got to, with, you know, trying to get money. You know. Yeah, that'd be the shit. You know, that's the crazy system we in. It all is based on money. Like, for example, you know, right boy Rick is so in the city because he said he was too... <laughs> and and I be hearing people, I had an argument with the lady yesterday. I just watched that movie about four or five months ago. I didn't see the movie yet, but she was telling me like okay. she was telling me like you should have seen the movie. They trapped him. He was only fourteen years old. They told him if they if he didn't sell dope for them, he would have been. They would have locked his daddy up. He had to do what he had to do to save his daddy. I said, bitch, every dope boy got a story. Either they feeding their kids. <laughs> or they... You sound like Jay Z. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, got a story. everybody got a story. I said if he get money from the city, every nigga on Dexter deserve a check too. What the fuck is he got from us? Because you tell us to work oh, with the police. To you take heard a... about killing Mike? What he doing? Killer Mike down there right now. He like, look, he's like, we they they saying, you know, black, brown, people of color kept the weed industry flourishing before it became legal. So the black communities, co- communities of color, should be getting a percentage. I, no, I've been said, I've been because I said I, I think it's crazy and it's weird. And tell me about if, if it's just me that the, the government would out of their way to destroy organized crime to take over the business. It used to be illegal to gamble. Now you can gamble right. on your phone. It used to be illegal to buy weed. It's like they destroy crime to make it le- to, to to control it. So it's like how illegal is shit? You well, know, my dad told me that. Look, first of all, how many times have you heard of somebody get into an accident and they were under the influence of marijuana? Yeah, alcohol all day, every day. No, it was good, but you know, alcohol, uh, weed was considered a uh, category one drug back in the twenties. I forgot what president was running, and he needed something to attack to rally around. You know, I'm against this, so he made weed a category one drug. We is no way in hell like heroin, crack, or any of those. Yeah, I know, but, but, it's, but, that's but they- what, once that stigma got started. It just flourished through the uh, decades. And did right, but then they destroyed it. They destroyed the name of it, made it a stigma. You couldn't admit out loud unless that you smoke weed. All this shit until now. And now you got places looking like the iPhone store, but they selling weed. <laughs> and it's like, but they was arresting people for ten, 10 years ago. You was going to prison for having pounds it's of weed. Still people in prison. That's why they like, everybody should be immediately released. Immediately. So that's. You had the Kennedys do that, and they got a permanent place in. Alcohol. That's like that's like for the same example with um with um gambling and hoeing, and some right. states legalize crack. So it's like, what is going on? Y'all telling us it's evil. You <laughs> begging can't pay, and that's why I don't trust this new miracle shot they going. I wouldn't be surprised if if if, if Disney came up with a vaccine tomorrow, because it's like <laughs> it, you, you realize it to the point. It's not even about health and ain't about the people. It's, it's about money. And who can make it? On the I want to be on some. <laughs> 
all people got vaccinated. You can get free Disney Plus for a month if you get. I wouldn't be surprised if I see that tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised because you know, I'm, I'm starting to realize two tickets to Disneyland. Yeah, I, I'm starting to. And on top of they may say some. You got a chance to win two tickets. Like you, got, you want me to experiment my body to get a chance to win some money, but I'm starting to realize it's not about people. It's not about the system. It's all about money.